This lesson is just a brief overview of how you can put walls in. There are three ways you can put walls in. You can do a freehand method, a baseline method, or you can trace over an image. In brief, if I want to go and do a freehand wall, let's go and select, say, the 220 brick veneer wall. I can then just come onto the screen. Notice down the very bottom left-hand corner, there's a help string. At the moment, it's saying, pick first insertion point. It's telling you what to do. So if I pick a point, you'll also notice that the commander has engaged. So now I can actually type a distance and an angle if I wish. But also, the help string down the very bottom now is saying, pick next insertion point. So if I just roll in, I can then say, OK, this is going to be a freehand method. So I just want a a 6x6 six six garage to start off with just so something simple. So notice I can just drag my mouse until I've got approximately the 6 meters. Then once I do it I just drag down and I drag down approximately 6 meters. It doesn't have to be exact, you can drag anywhere you like as long as it's around about the distance you're, you're looking at on that dynamic dimension. Come over here, now I'm going to sort of pick a little bit off the beginning of the top of it up here because if I pick here, and then when I try and finish, I've got to actually close it, which means I've got to join up to the first point. But what you'll notice is as you drag up and move over towards the point, see how it's shot back? And it will then close the wall. You hit your right mouse button and then go finish. So if I come in on that, I've, I've now got the box, which is made up of a 220 brick veneer wall. If I touch one of the walls, you'll notice that the dynamic dimensions appear. Notice it was it dragged in at about six, just over 6 metres, but now that is saying 6385. What happens with a wall? What happens with a member, which is, you know, a piece of timber or a U-beam or something like that? Even, <coughs> excuse me. Even the handrails or anything else, they all go in on the centre point. So see how it's got a green dot there? That's the centre point of the wall. And you're going to say, well, it's a 220 wall. It is actually a 70 mil wall with a 40 mil cavity and a 110 skin on the outside. So the core of the wall is 70, and that's what Envisioneer works on. So a wall always goes in at the center point of the core of the wall. So to get this 6 meters by 6 meters, what I need to do is touch the wall and then move my arrow over one of the dynamic dimensions I want to change. So when I move it over it, see the, the arrow change to a hand? If I touch that, I then am able to edit the dimension. So you can see that the dimension 6385 is highlighted blue. There's no need for you to click into there and backspace. If I touch it, as soon as it's highlighted, I can just continue to type. So all I'm doing is I'm going to type 6, zero 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 so I don't have to backspace or click into it if it's highlighted blue just start typing because it will then erase what it's highlighted then with my mouse just hit OK so you can see now the overall width of the building is six meters now if I move down and touch the bottom wall or the top wall whichever way I want to work I tend to work clockwise or anti-clockwise the opposing dynamic dimensions appear so again, I want to touch the outside of the building, touch the dynamic dimension I want, start typing 6 metres and hit the enter on your keyboard or with your mouse hit the OK button. So now I've got a room, that, a garage there let's say, of 6 metres by 6 metres. It may not look that, it's just the way that I've got had to do the resolution of the screen. It looks a bit rectangular rather than square, but if I touch it, it's 6 metres that way, and if I touch this, it's 6 metres that way. That's freehand. Now, the second method is called a baseline. If you go up to your walls, you can notice the little black arrow beside it. If I drop that down, you can put a wall in, or you can put a wall in by baseline. So it does exactly the same thing as what I'm going to do, because I don't use this option from that button up there. I just, I just leave that set to walls. If I select the same wall, the 220 brick veneer wall, before I pick the first point, I right click, that's where I pick it from insert by baseline. Now if I select that option by picking it with my mouse, now pick a point to start, you'll notice for starters when I drag, 
see how it's just a green line there's no dynamic dimensions of appearing as you're pulling to the right or to the left like there was when I did it freehand so now if I'm dragging it to the left I'm going to start typing and watch the commander down the very bottom where it says distance if I start typing see how it automatically starts going into there so I'm going six meters and then I hit enter now all I have to do is drag my mouse in the direction I want it to go and type another dimension six meters drag it to the left type six meters now the end one you don't have to worry you can just sort of float around there but basically it has created that closed form that we need so rather than doing any more all you have to do is right click your mouse select finish now with the walls by baseline you then get to choose what is the line that you've just drawn and I'm going to select this one the outer face of the veneer I can select the outer face of wall core or stud or I can select the inner face of wall so in this case it is ticked correctly all I have to do is hit OK it looks identical to its twin next door but if I touch it it's six meters that way and if I touch this it's six meters that way that's the second way of doing it okay so I'm just going to erase those because the next one the trace one um, is, a, is a little bit different so the next one is basically using the trace option under file so I've got file import project trace image we'll talk about this more in more depth later but for now if I select that I can then select a JPEG a bitmap or a TGA so if I just sort of scroll down and find my training documents just give me a bit here okay so I've got my trace image folder notice there's nothing in there because it's set to JPEG I've got them scanned in as bitmap so if I click that there it is there if I come up here to my views and go extra large icons I can then see now what you might end up with is you might end up with something like this that could be you know a brochure someone's brought in it could be something like this which is like a hand drawn some um, sketch that a client has brought in so if I open that one this here the image details there's nothing you need to do there you just hit OK and you go and drop the image on the screen now if I roll in on that you'll notice it just looks like a hand drawn sketch now what you need to do is you need to know um, some dimension on it because this is a you know it's not a precise accurate way of putting something in but it's a very quick way of you getting something in and tracing over it to get quantities and to actually get the, the shape of your building to start designing with so let's go into the study you can see that they wanted that 3.3 let's assume that that's 3.3 between that wall and that wall if you touch the trace image and then right click you've got the option to resize so if I go resize I can go between that point and that point it isn't 1348 it is 3300 hit enter and actually you've seen that sort of made it bigger now that's somewhat to scale so now I can just happily pick the wall and start picking freehand and working my way around the building just give me a minute Want to go around the outside and our last point should be over here there it is so now I can actually turn that off or I can delete the image to turn it off you go to your view filter under notation project trace image close the eye and there are my walls being traced now to actually work your way around there you need to touch the wall touch the dimension and resize it and work around the whole project until you've got it how you want it all right that'll do us for this we'll go on to the next lesson shortly thank you